Welcome to Pookie Ponders, the podcast where I explore big questions with brilliant people. I'm Pookie Knightsmith and I'm your host. Today's question is, what do recycled flower bottle sculptures have to do with well-being? And I'm in conversation with Kat Hall. Um, I'm Kat and um, I uh, live and work in Waltham Forest. Um, I'm a uh, what do I call myself? Lots of different things. I w- I'm a fully qualified teacher, which I absolutely love. Uh, my teaching is my passion, but I was very lucky a few years ago to um, be working in the borough of Newham, the lovely borough of Newham, in uh, some of the probably the toughest schools um, you know you can imagine. They're really quite challenging. And then one day, this lovely company called Emergency Exit Arts came in to the school to deliver a, um, uh, a lantern making workshop. And I sat there and went, yes, this is what I want to do. So I had that spark of like, yep. And so that's what I do. I don't make lanterns, but I sometimes do. But I'm basically a a creative practitioner. I work, um, I have a business called uh, Arts Generation. And I deliver hundreds of different projects, bespoke projects into different schools. So that's me, basically. Cat Hall. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a very excellent introduction and I have so many different questions already so the kind of the the question that the episode title is about what do recycled flower bottle sculptures have to do with well-being and I'm trying to go back in time to think this sounds like quite a specific question yeah. but I think it's because um the person who recommended I speak to you Anne Musgrove is the yeah. head at uh, Sutton High Prep School and I believe this is a project you do with the the children there so perhaps you can start with telling us a bit about that yeah, well, I have a little example, which always helps. <gasps> but, um, yeah, wow. you're going to have to describe it for those who are listening. <laughs> absolutely. So I have this bottle in front of me and it's, a, it's a, always used as um, a mixer bottle, a water bottle. Um, and it's been recycled to make beautiful um, plastic bottle sculptures. And what we do is um, the pupils involved, and I've done this in quite a few schools now, and it's, and it's sort of escalated. And the ones that we do at Sutton uh, School have evolved into more this sort of example, which is where the, they've made flowers um, and so they've cut part sections of the bottles, they've painted them first, they've cut them. Um, and what's lovely is um, it's sort of thing that could take five minutes, but when you do it with a year five class, which is generally the year group I work with um, at Sutton High, is uh, for this particular project, is it such. Um, an amazingly calming and purposeful activity because what you get is the pupils, in this case, the girls collect, like, you know, um, after they've used the bottles, they bring them in, this massive stack of bottles in the uh, art room. And then we, um, we sort them and we really sort of go to town on analyzing this, this humble bottle. And I give them uh, inspiration by looking at the work of, Dale Chihuly, who's a glass artist, and a lot of them are lucky enough to have been to the um, uh, v and Museum. And in the rotunda entrance there, this is amazing spiral, beautiful, stunning glass sculpture. So that's our sort of inspiration. We talk about that. We look at lots of other of his um, works, uh, including some that are in Kew Gard- were in Kew Gardens, um, Hampton Court, places like that. And we look at the stunning um, range of shapes and patterns within uh, those sculptures. And then we look at sort of eco artists and people like Sarah Turner, who makes beautiful um, sort of elephants and things. She's amazing. Uh, And then we think about what we can create. And we create, um, like I said, for some of the workshops we've done in the past with other year groups we've created chandeliers which hang in their halls so they're basically cutting spar- painting and cutting spirals and for this project we as you can see those of you who can we, we use different parts this is just the neck of the bottle here and we cut out um beautiful flowers we paint the boards these background boards and then the girls just literally they decide where everything goes how many layers it has how thick their petals are how thin I mean I could go on forever but yeah (laughs) that's basically in a nutshell and um I think what they get from it is just a sort of calmness actually do you know what this isn't a very expensive material this is something we've we've recycled so there's not that fear of oh I'm gonna mess it up the acrylic paint lasts and lasts and lasts. So, okay, it's quite expensive material, but they get the value of that. And what's lovely is they see once you paint, you paint the outside of the bottle. And then once you 
you cut it and bend it back, you get this lovely almost stained glass effect. Mm. Um, and what I love about this one, which is a VA, VE day project actually, is you can actually see through to the other side and it's got that lovely, this is filled with water. So it's imagine a, a bottle, a plastic bottle filled with water with these lovely flowers attached. And I don't know, it's just something that I absolutely rave about. And it's like, I just, um, in any schools I go to, they just seem to just, evolve these projects and this is something with Anne at um, uh, Sutton we've developed over the years so yeah no it's that's basically uh, plastic bottle sculptures in a nutshell but yeah I wow. hope that explains it <laughs> it does explain it no and I'm and I'm really intrigued uh, by by it how did you come to start using plastic bottles in that way because that seems a bit of a leap I mean to me yeah. plastic bottles are a bit boring yeah <laughs> not anymore Absolutely. well I hope not no um I just think it's something because of the quality of I mean whenever I work with, with children um in whatever schools if I ask them to paint on something that they're not used to painting on it suddenly it's like anything you know if you um I don't know if you, when I did my training, when I was uh, training to uh, become a primary school teacher, I did very fortunate to do a B.Ed. And we did in those days, you did an, a, a B.A. A sort of a degree at the same time. So I did my art degree then. I really wanted to go to art school, but it didn't work out. So I feel like what I've sort of become an artist in a, a different route, which is great. And what I want to say is that I ch try and channel that into the uh, into the pupils, and I try and encourage them to think. Look, you know, um, whatever I'm doing, I will sometimes think this is actually is this really interesting? I don't know, but when I go in and I explain it and I infused and I, I about what we're doing, I think that's what comes across, and I think that's what my sort of value is: is that I I, I get very enthusiastic about something very simple, but then I think the pupils they get quite a lot from that and uh yeah uh to answer your question i just think it's transforming something into like you say something quite dull and doesn't really have much purpose once it's finished but we don't want it to go into landfill we want to actually you know um produce something beautiful from it and over lockdown it's been great because it's something that a lot of people have access to so my the films that i i went on to make about how to create these sculptures um at first I was a bit worried because I thought actually you know it's not something maybe the younger children can do on their own but with support from families and people working together as a family unit it seems to be quite popular so yeah so you you have a YouTube channel now with ideas about how to to do this yes um, I do yeah yeah I um like I said beginning of lockdown all I basically my work is pretty busy pretty steady all the way year all the way through a year an academic year and sometimes I'm lucky it's through the summer holidays as well but um at lock, when lockdown happened it was like right every single and my busiest term is the summer term obviously because they all oh, yeah. everyone wants like after exams we want lovely projects for our uh, our pupils to enjoy collaborate in etc and I suddenly went from having all these amazing projects booked in to completely nothing so that was a real blow to you know and I was lucky at least I you know I was able to I live in you know somewhere where we have a um my husband's you know earning money as well so it's not just me so I was grateful to for that but actually it does affect you in lots of ways you feel suddenly very useless and you think actually what am I going to do about this and I think like other people in lockdown you just go to something that you know and try and share it and if you're not going physically into a school because the school doesn't have isn't open anymore then how do you do this and I was lucky enough to get a commission from Waltham Forest uh, just for one film that's what it was and but before then I'd actually started to film so when they started to learn the techniques of filming which yeah. um were completely new to me and I think you can see from my very first film to my last one there's a slight progression I get a bit more relaxed I get like I went, had some um help with Walthamstow Film Lounge who gave me lots of editing points and um working on a um I can't remember the name of the program now but a very good editing program so I had to learn all that and I'm not particularly uh technical but I don't want it to beat me I'm like no nope, I'm going to try my best so I work really really hard and for a, a 20 minute film many 25 minute film it was hours of work but I enjoyed it and it kept me motivated during that very difficult period that we all went through of adjustment. And and have you had feedback from people who've been using those videos during lockdown? 
Yeah, I have. Yeah, I mean, because um, it's on a on a uh, a child, you know, a YouTube for children channel. You don't have the comments underneath, which I quite like. I don't wouldn't really want that anyway. But uh, personal uh, comments on um, emails and from um, you know from Waltham Forest itself. I, you know, they were really positive about it. And I think what it and even in my street, uh, we we have um, like a WhatsApp group, which I know lots of. You know communities have now which is amazing and I, there's a, a massive age range on here but when I was filming these I suddenly didn't have any plastic bottles like, oh my goodness so, so I look put out on there you know um has anyone got any and I'd have literally bags of them in my you know, front <laughs> garden and then I said look does anyone want to for the VE day ones does anyone want to make some I've got loads of acrylic da, da, da. and there were some teenagers up the road and there's some younger children and personal feedback that way was massive because I felt I was contributing and um you know and then other schools like um Sutton and other regular schools that I work with they um sent it out as part of their homeschooling so yeah that was amazing and just seeing pictures of them like spirals hanging up in the gardens they took it to whatever way they wanted and and that was brilliant yeah that's really fun and do you think that you have achieved that aim that you had that day that you saw the lanterns being made uh, in school have, have you kind of yeah scratched that itch yes definitely yeah it's been a long hard slog I've been uh, I um, basically yeah left uh, full-time teaching can't remember how old now I mean how long ago now but I set up my business in um 2003 uh, and I thought to myself then right if I have to do some supply work I will but you know I'm going to take that leap of faith and I'm going to go for it because this is my passion and it, there's been some really difficult times and there's been some amazingly like I'm so lucky I'm so privileged I do the job that I love and I think if you're doing a job you love you take the rough with the smooth and you just go do you know what at the end of the day, I am so lucky to be able to go in and share what I do with other, you know, with, with schools and community groups. So yeah, that taking that leap of faith can be quite scary, but sometimes it's just, you might, I mean, I didn't even know I was going to teach until like two weeks before the course started. I wanted to go and be a textile designer in Brighton and I didn't get into the course. So like now today, people receiving A-level results and some people not getting where they want. I, the people I know who are receiving, I've just said, look, do you know what? It, it, there's, these things sometimes happen for a reason. And I'm really glad, although I would have loved to have been a textile designer, <laughs> it would, wouldn't have been for me. I would have been unhappy. And um, I don't, didn't know that till quite recently. And I think it makes you realise that, you know, it, you just follow that path in life. And, and sometimes it takes you to the place where you feel, yep, this is great. I've, you know, there are struggles along the way, but you you know you can get there which is you know what form do those struggles take is this to do with when work is perhaps harder to to come by or yeah, yeah. So. well I mean they can take the form of um losing a bit of confidence in your in your own um ability I think I, I'm not particularly I can enthuse about what I do but I do think take things quite personally and I can be quite um you know, members of staff in schools can be quite, most people are amazing, but you sometimes maybe work with somebody who isn't so on tune with what you're trying to do. So, you know, there's struggles in that way, but there's also struggles of, um, you know, behavior and in the school, you know, when you're teaching. Um, but there's also, I don't really know, there's just, just this thing about wanting to get it right every time. And if it doesn't, say I, I make mosaics in schools and sometimes because they're such you have to get them right. You can't get mosaics wrong because they come off and all that. And that can be quite challenging. And you, you have, for example, this year we had a, a London Borough of Waltham Forest, sorry, last year was um, the uh, London Borough of Culture. So mm -hmm. we had a massive amount of funding and um, I work in a school very locally, very, a lot. I call them my sort of residency school really, because <laughs> I'm basically in there like Sutton a lot. Um, and you know I had they had money given to them to spend on these beautiful mosaic um story benches um and I led the whole project and because of the enormity I've never led anything as enormous of that before and uh there was a lot of sleepless nights because when it came to installation the big the lovely precast concrete benches that we'd ordered for the mosaics to be um put onto they were slightly too short 
And so when we came to put everything on, there was this whole row underneath that sort of flapped under. And I don't want to go into technicals, but oh my goodness, it was just like, ah, you know, and uh, I don't think I coped with it very well. My husband was like, but it's funded. It doesn't matter. You know, it's not the school's money, but actually you feel so responsible and you want the mosaics were beautiful. They were, the, the children work so hard on them. And obviously we work very hard on them and you just want everything to go right. And I think that's what sometimes the issues are. You know, you just feel like, Ugh. but we got there in the end. It was a lot of hard work, but I've, my, my family, my daughter came back from uni, um, my friend, we all went in and we all worked together and got through it, you know, and uh, I think I, I just know now to not take on too much, just ask for help <laughs> or just say no if you can't do it. <laughs> I think those are all really important lessons more widely in life as well. And I think yeah. that must have been an especial challenge because I think there's a couple of things there, isn't there? One is about your own self-esteem and sense of worth and that hanging very much on a project that you clearly really cared about. But then there's also the fact that in this work that you were doing, presumably you're also a role model to the children who've been working with you. Yes, and so yes. then, you know, what's the right line to take? Do you want a role model? You know, perfectionism isn't necessarily yes. the answer Absolutely. or overcoming adversity. Yeah. So how did yeah. that influence how you acted? Um, well, I get, I mean, I didn't, I think it was coming up just before Christmas and it was starting to be very apparent that this wasn't going to be the easy project that, or the easy installation. I think installations are always doing the actual workshops are fine. It's the installations that become the, the, cause they're outdoors and things like that. So I think, um, you know, a, a member of staff was really, I, I got quite down about it and I was actually just in the, one of the classrooms, the children had gone home and I was in there just sitting there like, oh, I just don't think I can do this. This is just too hard. And she came in and she obviously saw that I was really upset. And I was just like, I thought, I, you know, I just needed her. Um, I didn't want to be, you know, to show I was upset. But I thought, you know what? Sometimes it's better to just say it. And I did. I just said, look, Murray, I'm really finding this very difficult. And I don't know. And she was just so amazing. She was so you know, so positive about, and she, look, it will happen. It's just, it happened to be Christmas and we were about to all shut down for Christmas and I expected everything to be done. And then we had the Christmas holidays and then come back to something that you haven't finished. So you've got it at the back of my mind. I would have it at the back of my mind. So to deal with that was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy Christmas, but I got there and I did, and I just had to put it to, you know, it's quite hard sometimes, isn't it? To put things there and leave them and think, look, Let's move on and, um, you know, find strength and through friendship and talking to, you know, other people about just literally letting go of it is, is, you know, sometimes difficult, but I tried and I did and we got there and everything worked in the end. So, yeah. Presumably that is a challenge of doing the thing that you love as your job because you can't step away from it in the same way that you might be able to if you were doing something that you cared less about. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, my basic, my, uh, my work never finishes. I mean, lockdown has been brilliant for me mentally because I've actually, I started off by like running around trying to do all these films. And I have, like I said to you before we came on air, I said, I've actually not done any for some time because I now want to go back to doing something with a lot more, calmness and a lot more um sort of being um good to me so my mantra since then because um you know it did affect me quite badly and also I started to do all these high intensity workouts and running and I do you know I love exercise it's very good for uh my mindset but actually my friend said to me Kat you're just doing too much why don't you use this opportunity to do um, uh, yoga. So I've actually, for the first time in my life, I'm doing yoga and it's changed my whole life already. And I'm, you know, it's only online on 30 days of yoga thing, but actually I, it's going to really help me when I go back to work with, um, schools again, it's going to give me breathing. It's going to give me self worth. And I feel like it's actually, you know, without lockdown, I wouldn't have done it. And I would have made the excuses. Oh, the classes are too long. Oh, I have to go and drive somewhere, which I'm not going to do. You know, I'm not, I don't, not very, I am actually quite agoraphobic. I am, um, but then I, I'm actually quite claustrophobic as well. So it's a bit of a clash. And um, so leaving, you know, as an artist, as a workshop provider, you are constantly having to load your car up 
I don't have a van. I'd love a van, but I have a car mm -hmm. and uh, drive to a school that you don't know. So the stresses of that, leaving your secure, lovely family home with all your equipment. If you forget one thing, it's not like you can just pop to a shop and get it because they might, they don't necessarily sell blue magenta or magenta tiles, you know, so you've got to, anyway, so equipment is scary because if you forget something, you can usually muck, muck in, muck by, but actually I like to be very organized. And then you've got to leave there, go to a, you know, go to a school that you don't know, um, deliver, you know, get in, unload, deliver a workshop, um, do it so they'll go, oh, wow, we want her back, which is used to be my, you know, so I'm trying to say, this is what I used to be. And I'm hoping now going forward, I won't be like this. I won't put too much pressure on myself that I am only human and I can, you know, I can get by. So, um, yeah, basically I'm hoping um, and it's quite a unique job in that way. There's a lot of artists who go out into schools and I'm very jealous of the, of the and I love them. They're amazing. But, you know, the music, um, music workshop providers who can just come in with a, a little iPad or something and press play. And I'm like, there's me with thousands of <laughs> crates of stuff. And then the, the teachers come down to the car park sometimes, the amazing teachers who see you struggling, go, would you like a hand? I'm like, actually, yes, there's this million <laughs> bags to take in. Um, yeah, so, um, sorry, I forgot what the question was. Well, sorry. you were talking, is it yoga with Adrienne that you've been doing? Yes, yeah. Like my yoga. husband is a big fan. He's always trying to persuade me to, yeah. um, to, to make a start with his oh. other woman, as he refers to her. Oh, my goodness. So. Yeah, my husband, he's got the other woman as well, because he has really bad back pain from computer work, like, you know, a lot of people, and uh, I'm getting him to do it now as well. And she is amazing. I'm on the second lot of hers now. And just, she just says to you, you, you've made it onto the map. You've given yourself permission to be kind to yourself. And that was my friend. That's what we decided, decided when I had um, a bit of a, uh, a bit of a bad time in lockdown is that actually, you know, to do with social, your whole social life, doesn't it? Your whole social awareness is just turned upside down and mm. you know, a bit of paranoia and things like that. And basically, um, with her she's just like you've come to the map be kind to yourself and uh you know breathe in breathe in um sort of being you know uh, nurturing breath and then breathe out and it's all about just giving yourself permission to be um you know to think think kindly about yourself through what you do and uh it's never it, i don't think i'd have ever done yoga without this happening you know so it's a positive really it is and I do recommend it thoroughly <laughs> <laughs> and do you think you'll continue with the yoga post -long? yeah definitely yeah. yeah I really will and I know she's got some quick ones that you can I mean you can access it on your phone and things like that obviously it's better to have a quiet space but I noticed there's a couple that I could maybe even do if I snatch myself 10 minutes in a school like go and find a quiet area yeah. and just like literally the breathing and the awareness because I think I'll be a better person going into this next stage of my life because I think it because I'm 52 now and I'm, no, I'm not really old but I do find things harder I find it harder to struggle in and I find it harder to think ha it's quite a physical thing I do I don't sit down all day I actually took off my Fitbit about two uh, three weeks into lockdown because I was getting too competitive for myself usually I do I think it's supposed to be 10,000 is the is what you're supposed to do steps a day but most people try and do 15. I was on 22,000 a day without even trying. That's mm. how much of a physical job it is when you're commuting. You don't sit down. You're always up and about. And um, it just got to me, I think. I just thought, absolutely, I just need to be cut. And if I need to say, I'm an old lady now, I need to sit down at this table, <laughs> then I'm going to do it, you know? Mm. I just think it, it, it's um, physically, it can be so draining and um I do a lot of sewing on of you we do tapestries and before, uh, last year no the year before before Christmas I literally brought some tapestries home to sew, sew on all these individual um, pieces that the, the pupils have made and I think I was sewing on something like 90 pieces in a day and I got massively 
what's it called? Uh, you know, where you can't move your hands and stuff. RS Repetitive strain? Oh, or? Yeah, RSI. Yeah. And I couldn't, couldn't work. So, you know, I've learned to now just yeah. think, look, you know, you can't, you've got to be kind to yourself. And if it takes you longer, you do it. But I'm a bit of a whirlwind and I want to get it done like that. So <laughs> it I sounds like you've done help. quite a lot of learning about yourself recently. Yeah, definitely. I have. And, um, you know, uh, my cho- I'm lucky my children are older. One's went traveling last year and now he's back and he's working he's very lucky he's got a job and my daughter's about to go back to uni for her second year and I think you what you do is you you realize that actually you've got time on your hands and you I'm not my friend will tell me off but she's I always say I don't know how people can be bored I'm just never bored I don't understand because I don't understand boredom but actually perhaps boredom is a good thing to do to experience because um i think it makes you just take things like actually i'm so privileged that i've got this 15 minutes of my day where i don't actually have to hear about and go and tend this that and the other i'm and, and also not having people in the house has been massively different because i i just have these standards that aren't realistic they're just not you know, they're not realistic. And I know I've got quite close friends who are really house proud and I don't think it's healthy. I think it's actually, I like things to be tidy in my work, in my job. Like I like to have everything. I spent a lot of time sorting out my studio. So all my mosaics, I love your books. (laughs) My My, mosaics are like that now. Yeah, they're all (laughs) colour coded. And to have that time to do that, to have the radio four on down in my studio, to tidy up my studio has been massive. But I come into the house and I think, do you know what? We're a family. We've got a dog. We, we live, you know, we're lucky we've got a big space. And I, I think now what I've done is because people aren't coming into the house because of lockdown, I've thought, do you know what? We're fine. If I, you know, as long as the kitchen's tidy and the bathroom's clean, it, it, you know, we can get by. So, um, I think that's also, I get quite like, oh my goodness, there's going to be people coming to the house in a few months time when lockdown or whatever it is, you know, finishes. Mm. I think actually it's been really lovely. <laughs> I love having people <laughs> in the garden because they could come around the side, but having people in the house is, I think it, it made me realise how, uh, you know, worried I get about how things look and how people might think of me that I'm slovenly. <laughs> oh my God, you know, and it, well, house isn't that bad. It's fine. You know, it's just lived in, you know. So it's loved. Absolutely. It is loved. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I think, um, you know, just taking time out once a day, um, they're only short sessions. They're not the full on hour. I think some yoga sessions are an hour and a half, aren't they? If you go to a class, but I presume quite a lot of that is self meditation at the end Mm. where you may be given 15, 20 minutes just to lie and relax and stuff. So, um but what's again i'm competitive with my you know how i am with my my um when i do something physical like i used to do zumba twice a week and i'd be like front row and i've got to be get it all right and da, da, da. and now i'm doing this yoga and there's nobody else here it's just me and I, it's a revelation it's like yay and i think i can translate that to when i'm delivering my next set of um films that I will be more, you know, take the opportunity. There's nobody here to judge you. And I do think when I did my drawing films um, about just bringing in a bit of calmness, I will have more awareness of that myself now. And I think that will hopefully help feed into my next set of exciting uh, workshops, which are starting to come in again. They're starting to be rebooked, which gives me massive help, um, hope, you know, uh, because if things schools shut down again then obviously I will not be going back in so I've got mm-hmm. got this little niggle that actually made me think but I've just got to be positive and go look if I can I can if I can't I'll go back to doing more more films and um, you know diversifying and uh, you know just seeing what comes up and just being hopeful that like I said at the beginning everything's there for a reason and um, my husband's been working from home which has been amazing and actually we actually after it's our wedding anniversary tomorrow 20 27 years of being together um I think you know 
we realise we're actually very lucky <laughs> that we get on. So yes. yeah. it's a long time. It's a long time. Yeah, absolutely. So, so do you think that what you hope to make people feel through your workshops, whether they're face to face or people kind of joining uh, by watching the videos, do you think that's changed for you? Because it sounds like maybe it has a little bit. I don't think I realised until I spoke to you, Vicky, that it actually really has changed. And I am going to be... Um, it actually, yes, because yesterday I had to write a proposal for um, a school doing a recovery curriculum in uh, Newham, a school I've worked in before. And they want to, you know, I just, I really do think it's changed. I watched your, um, I did your little, your course on Monday about Swan and it was uh, very inspiring. And um, I wrote loads of notes and I was like, you know what, I'm going to take this and I'm going to trans, when I do my proposals, usually it's like, date when I'm coming in what we you know what the theme is what materials but I'm now going to add every time which I, I think will be really valuable please make sure all staff involved in this project please can they observe this paragraph and there will be a paragraph I've nearly I think I've nearly cracked it but I'm using some of your um you know your your statements hope you don't mind, but, don't mind. Uh, from your course and uh just things about going back to the child and, um, you know, if I'm coming in to do a workshop, well, I know this, I mean, I'm not preaching, but I was a teacher. If a person came in to do a workshop, don't matter if it's history, science, I'd be like there, what, you know, da -da, I'm going to take part. I'm going to, I'm going to make notes. I'm going to go and support that child over there who's struggling. I'm sorry, but I get teachers, not all the time, but some, and I know how precious time is in schools. But I, am, I get teachers who will sit and do their marking. And I'm like, no, that's not going to happen again. And before I might, I might said, actually, do you mind just putting that away? Because I think I need some support with this child. It, it's somebody in your... If you observe that child making this piece, whatever it is, you're going to learn something, surely. Or if you watch that group making this structure out with these, surely you're going to learn something. And I think what I'm... What I, uh, those children deserve is me to say in a nice way a positive way wow let's have a paragraph where almost senior management need to say this workshop's happening let's really make sure that we get the most from it um not just a, an end product which is what i find you know a lot of schools are after a beautiful end project that's project that's fine but my um theory has always been about the journey to that product uh to that artwork and I did my th my thesis and my dissertation on that and it's vitally important it's like the drawings the the warm-up drawings the mistakes we make are all if we can like you were saying if we can do all those things and then get a positive experience from it then that's something that those children will look back on and go wow you know that was a great experience so yeah yeah that, but sometimes so it's the it's the journey and the incidentals that are the things that that stick with us yes. more even isn't it and yeah and we we can learn a, a lot along the way and I, I wonder as well about with the kinds of work that you go in and and do surely that's a really brilliant opportunity for the staff to be learning and having fun and laughing alongside Absolutely. their pupils yeah yeah um, definitely yeah and that's uh, very agree. important right now yeah, absolutely. And I, I think this first project that hopefully will happen in September is, um, you know, is going to facilitate that because they're in a bubble. Usually children rotate through to wherever I am, you know, so say eight to 10 children will come in da, 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 or I'll have half a class and then, you know, that sort of thing. But now because they're in class bubbles, I'm going to be going into their classrooms. And so for me, Although practically sometimes it's not easy because I tell you what, they have so much stuff on their desks and it's like, oh, get that out of the way. And there's obviously going to be practicalities of what they use because of the COVID regulations. But I think it is massive. Like you say, the staff need to feel part of it. And it, I'm going to, I don't, you know, I've got things like all inclusive. Let's, let's make sure we're all hands on and work together. And you create something as well. You know, you go through the same challenges um, and um, experiences as as the children, and you will get so, and you'll learn so much more. It's like CPD in your classroom, but yeah. and that's what you know. A lot of schools, 
get so much from it because they are actively involved they encourage their staff to be actively involved it can be uh, scary though as an adult if if you yeah. don't feel that you're good at art to participate yeah. in that kind of activity can't it i um i went last year for a week um in wales to learn mm -hmm. to draw so i haven't drawn since i was a child um oh, and wow. i went and did the right side of the brain drawing course in a beautiful okay. beautiful location yeah. um and it was so hard i mean i loved yeah. it and i loved yeah. the idea that one could learn and the tranquility like everything about it was brilliant but mm -hmm. it was probably the scariest thing I've done in a really long time just going oh. and yeah, yeah just trying yeah. to learn something I just didn't know how to do and I had really? all these judgments about you know I can't do that I've been told I couldn't do that it was the one GCSE yeah. option I wasn't allowed to take and um, you know it's uh, yeah yeah so so do you do you get faced with that kind of challenge from the adults in the classroom that they're yeah. scared of art yeah no I, I mean I'll you know I, when I've run um uh adult CPD classes in you know for teachers in schools and I immediately just try and you know get the, this sort of level playing field because like you know children in the class they all know who the best drawer is and they all know who's the best at art it doesn't matter what age they are and you're like actually we're just gonna let's get all that out the way and let's just think about this as a journey and we I make it try and make it fun with games etc and um which I presume you did when you did your course because it, it's all about you know inspiring um people just have a go and it's not all about giving uh, the pupils just a, a plain blank piece of a4 it's like i said earlier about the painting on plastic it's about giving them something they suddenly go oh, actually is this art and you're like yeah of course it is well, you know a lot of people's experience of art is just like a pencil and a piece of paper or some watercolor paper paint etc but giving staff that right rather than giving them reams of photocopy paper to draw on why don't we just give them one really beautiful small piece of a of quality uh watercolor paper and you know a, a palette of paints and just really i don't know big up the fact that it's sometimes about the materials themselves will allow you to do something beautiful without it just a few brush strokes and then letting it dry and then maybe adding some pen marks wow you know it's not about i'm very much of like we're not going to sit and make a photographic image of some fruit we're not going to do that we're going to try and find something like goes back to the yoga try and find something in you that can you can be proud of and i think that's what um i going forward and and back you know to what i've done in the past i think puts um people at ease a little bit more there's always gonna if there's not time to go through all that then obviously it's different but if there is time and the schools that get the best workshops are the ones that allow that sort of nurturing drawing and maybe i need to on my website promote that more i need to say look you know that after covid let's think about what is vital and like you were saying on your course the academic stuff has got to all it's got to wait and let's get back to being positive teachers positive with you know each other um and making that foundation for things might be a way through drawing to promote you know promote this sort of um building blocks if you see what i mean <laughs> yeah absolutely and i think that's such an important thing because i think there's going to be lots of children and teachers actually returning to the classroom in the autumn who are quite scared because they yeah. haven't been in this environment for a long time and no. they might be worried about re-engaging with their learning and whether they can still do it and it feels absolutely. to me that yeah your kind of creative endeavors that gives them a chance to re-engage in a way that feels a bit more accessible and actually they do create something so it's about the journey but also i did this that must yeah, you know proud of it. absolutely yeah. yeah yeah i i totally agree and i think having that um you know takeaway i've done these teach meets over covid as well with great creative schools and they to or teach takeaways i suppose you call them and it was just like an hour and 15 minutes cpd um and a learning curve again massively because it's on zoom like this and there's not you know it, i can't i haven't got visualize or anything like that so it's quite challenging but i did things like scavenger hunts and i did things like drawing big drawing small all those things and actually the comments i got were this has just made me you know 
feel more confident. It's been such a scary time. And that's something I can now take in. I mean, that was when schools were being phased. There were some year groups in and some weren't and all that sort of thing going on last term, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. And now I know that quite a few schools are allowing, and this school I'm in next term, are allowing their, um, their teacher to stay with the class for two weeks as a recovery curriculum. And this, this workshop that I'm going to be delivering is part of that. And I think that school have got it spot on because they, like you say, the, those children haven't seen their teacher, some of them, since March. So, and vice versa. And so for the teacher to have those two weeks with those children before they say goodbye and move on, you know, is, I think is, is, is a really good way forward. And I hope that, you know, like you're saying, I can, um, I can, through through loads of different art projects but allow teachers to build up their confidence again because it is it's a scary time I mean I, I know that I will be quite if it happens I'll be quite uh, nervous so I mean I think I'm coming into well I hope so coming into Sutton uh, and it's that whole not just being in the school it's the journey there the journey back who are you going to meet on the way um, you know what's life going to be like in September and for all these pupils traveling in from various places as well you know um unless they're confident and their families are confident and happy you know it's just like you said with it you just got to put the academic on hold and 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 see how it how it progresses but i'm yeah. really i'm hoping it'll all be massively positive and, and what uh, will you be doing what will the workshops consist of what um yeah. basically they wanted a recycle project Yay. So, um, which is great for me because that's sort of what something I, as you know, from what I said earlier with the flowers. So they're going to be making, um, their logo is a tree, uh, their school logo, and they want to, it's Dursingham School Blossoms again. And they're going to have um, recycled, I sent them loads of options, basically. I said, you could try this, this and this. Um, but materials that are recycled are, are just great because you haven't got this massive amount of stuff to prepare. Well, you do have to prepare it, but buy it, of course. And uh, so we're using recycled CDs or DVDs, um, which the school that there, the children are all going to collect. And we're going to paint, paint and draw on those with acrylic. So very sort of similar to this stuff here, but you know, patterns um, and wording. And the wording is all going to be generated from the first drawing activity. Um, we'll, we'll have probably have circles on uh, paper and they'll, we'll do lots of warm up drawing about, um, I think it's courage, hope, resilience. I think those are the three words that they've, they've come up with so far um, as a school moving forward. And they want it to do with the schools on recovery. We're going to, we're going to nail this. We're going to, we're going to get through it as a team, as a whole school. So there's going to be a mixture of CDs in their school colours um, and flowers. So little, um, you know, uh, blossoms of recycled bottle sculpture flowers, which I'm really happy about because it gives me, I know it's a project I can deliver. I just want it to be a project that I can deliver in a way that fits in with the school uh, and where they are at this time. So it'll be, ma it'll be a massively important project for, for me and for them, I think. So it's quite exciting to think. It's great. That they're, it. Yeah, it's great that they're really embracing that because I think there is this understanding, isn't there, that kind of, yeah, creativity and these kind of nurture based projects are going to be so important in, in kind of, yeah, rebuilding our learners so that they will be strong. And I think that, you know, we talk about um, sort of traumatic growth and, and this yeah. has been a challenging time, but I think that our young people might come out even stronger if only we manage this interim bit yes. in the right kind of way. I think that's going yeah. to be really vital. Definitely. What do you think about um, some schools are going the other way aren't they and they're really focusing on kind of catch-up curriculum and making up for lost time and this is where music and art and things like that probably going to get sort of sidelined what do you feel about that well I don't I don't I I think that they would be um find maybe in a few months time that they're gonna that it's not a, won't have worked and I do think that um you know there may be a a compromise is great you know compromise is fine and if there is the pressure on certain schools to achieve certain things and i totally understand um you know i work in state and independent schools and i can see there is some always a pressure in some certain sectors of um education but i just think there has to be even if it's oh, i don't know even if it's just like some afternoons where 
art and music and drama and dance take place it has to be recognized as something vital to go alongside the academic the catch-up and you know what the catch-up it might not happen like for another yeah the, ch the child the covid children as you call them they might not catch up for some time and um i just think if i was worried about catching up i wouldn't catch up but that's i i you know i respect that there's there are a lot of different ways of learning and, and catching up can mean many different things. But um, I personally think it's, uh, it's not a priority. A prior I know parents will expect it to be. And that's where obviously uh, senior leaders have got a very difficult few weeks, months ahead. And I do feel for them because um, I think they've got the support of, uh, of the government or the politicians. That's, but I'm not sure what the angle is. I don't know. I, I was waiting for a, uh, I think there was a um, I think it's tomorrow is there an update on Covid regulations so we will see but like I'll I was probably saying wait for about, a bank holiday that's what they normally do <laughs> yeah, oh, great yeah and then you can really uh, do stuff to respond to it but I just think you know my whole thing about collaboration you know we still need to collaborate even if children physically can't be near each other and can't share equipment so my mm. whole thing is about sharing equipment so um that's another massive challenge for a creative practitioner is how are you going to to manage that you know how are you going to still deliver um workshops when these children aren't supposed to be sharing any materials you know you're gonna have to suddenly provide 390 sharpies rather than 30 sharpies or something like that mm. so there is definitely a question about that but yeah i i, I personally think that they um, should go down Dursingham's route and do a recovery curriculum and, um, you know, and, and just use those two weeks as actually, if we spend two weeks really coming together and listening to the children, listening to our teachers, getting us all confident and feel confident in our space, in our bubble, in our, with our routines of what we're going to be doing for hand washing and all that, then everything else can follow and we can speed through it probably quicker than, if we went straight in day one, maybe had the day of like, oh, welcome back, da, da, da. And then, you know, I just think they need to spend at least two weeks, if not longer, getting September as more of a soothing September. Let's just heal those uh, really difficult times. And um, there may be children with post-traumatic, you know, issues that have got, gonna come out in many different ways. I mean, I'm not psycho, I don't, I didn't study anything to do with psychology, but I, you know, I know that children have massive emotion, emotional uh, difficulties when they've gone through something we all have. And they may know somebody who's, you know, been very ill and maybe some of their family. And, and I just think, or a teacher, I know school locally have lost a teacher. And, you know, it's, it's all very um, worrying if we think we can just plaster over that and nothing's going to erupt from it, because I think it will, you know, so it is, it's a concern yeah it's uncertain times isn't it and i guess that that's it that the that the schools who are um engaging with you um yeah I, m my kind of opinion would be i, I would I, I think it's got to be a really positive thing for those children but i guess everybody's got a different point of view and we don't actually know the answer i think that's a really difficult thing now we're all kind of making our very best guess aren't we yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, and I, and I think it's been really interesting just generally seeing how different schools have um, have responded during this time. And, and, and Sutton, the example we keep going back to, um, I interviewed the head of the senior school there recently, and she has a drama background. So she used to be a oh, drama right. teacher. Yeah. Um, and Anne, who you work with, the, yeah. the head teacher in the prep school there, she, um, you know, she's been painting a lot during uh, yeah. lockdown. And, and, and she, yeah, she's actually a really beautiful artist, isn't she? Absolutely. And, she's very good. Yeah. And it's, it's really made me kind of stop and think about how the things that we you know really matter to us personally how that changes how we lead and how that school is a very different kind of a school than perhaps it would be if you know their backgrounds were i don't know history or geography or english absolutely. and that's not to say it would be worse it would just be different wouldn't it it would be different absolutely and that's what i find you you know if a head changes and moves on suddenly the shutters will maybe come down and that school go no our priority is not to do creative activities anymore it's to do science and history which you know what is fine but there's room you know i when i deliver workshops i generally will touch on our you know a historical figure or uh, um you know if 
mosaics, for example, Romans, etc. We do cover other things, and and there's so much maths in mosaics. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I I do get a little bit concerned that actually, it you know, children can miss out on on a, something that might actually change. Like we've we've worked with, um, you know, like like Anne, the the head here at, at my local school is passionate about they art and they they name their classes after artists every year new artists and um they they've had quite a lot of um eastern european boys in the school and they absolutely love sewing so to be given permission to sew um and sit there and not have anyone go oh you're sewing is just my one of the most amazing things that i'll experience in my my career as a workshop provider big sorry i've got my cat coming and uh yeah so it's just like you know to to for that head to allow me to come in to do a project and then we have a boy who's really you know not particularly academic sitting there going oh do you know what i reckon i'm going to be a tailor when i grow up and me and my colleague went, oh, and we just wow. it just those are the moments that keep you going and i what i need to do is quant, you know, this is what has allowed me speaking to you. I don't, I don't spend enough time talking about these moments where you've gone, do you know what? That was the best thing that could have happened in this, sorry, not a cat's tail, go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it, it's far, it, it is, um, the heads are, it, it makes a massive difference to what they allow and what they find the money for, you know, the budgets, oh, you know, it's not a, it's not a high, earning school budget wise but you know they they find the money somehow and they get you in and i i just think look i'll do my best and i'll go above and beyond for schools like that because i want to yeah it's interesting isn't it i always um find this that um in my freelance work that the schools who really value what i do will find the money to pay for me to come and do that Absolutely. work um, yeah. and it's not really about budgets it's about priorities because there's always some money for the things yeah. that really really matter to that school definitely so. yeah there is definitely and um i know that from working with amazing heads in newham you know like in some of the like i said at the beginning some of the sort of most deprived areas you can sort of think of and what got me through was like my head said you know what cat if you're not if you're not going to do maths you just was sort of just before sats when i first started teaching so i was quite lucky to have that year or two where I literally went in and my first hour of the day would be getting the children to come in on time and the way I got them to come in on time and not tip up sort of an hour I mean the attendance was horrific was um, to be actively playing a social skills games with them in you know in the middle of the class on us all sitting around the classroom on the floor this is year three four not just year one or reception and um the, the attendance went up and then it's like well then i'm going to start doing creative activities because i love doing them and then what happened the attendance went up so you know i just think that those obviously should probably gonna get away with it now but it's a shame that you can't you can't get away with things like that i do find it like actually if the priority of that school was to get the kids in on time yeah. and then get them happy and learning then you know why not so yeah i um i do think like you say it very much depends on the head and um, finding the money they'll find the money so Absolutely. yeah I, I coached a school last year actually who took a really similar approach who had a massive issue with attendance and particularly on a friday um yeah. they would have very few children turning up or lots of children not turning up and they they did exactly as you've suggested doing kind of creative activities the first thing every morning on, on a yeah. friday afternoon they did yeah. a kind of big enrichment type projects that the kids loved oh. um, and they found that you know there was that pester power so even where the yeah. parents might find it hard to get the kids in the kids, yeah yeah pestered the parents to get them in on time and it made yeah yeah vast difference that's amazing that's really good mm -hmm. yeah i think that's yeah it's something that's uh you i've seen you know snippets of snippets of it as i've gone around like you very privileged that's going to go loads of different schools and you go oh that, actually that works really well and if you could pick them all out and put them into one school it would be you know it would be amazing but um i think there is more stuff that obviously with the advent of um you know having the screen the smart screen in your classroom and all that there's so much you know just dividing up the day and making it interesting and not just 
you know, having music or physical activities going on. It's, it's a lot, definitely, a, I think um, I'm a bit jealous of people who are now in QTs because actually I would like to start it all again. It would be an amazing journey because the technology's moved on so much. And, uh, mm. but I do use it in my work. You know, you know, you used to have to hold up a poster of um, Van Gogh's sunflowers and now you can have it massive. It's great, you know. So that <laughs> sort of thing, you know, is, is, a, is an improvement, definitely. Yeah. Oh, it's been really lovely hearing about all the work that you're doing and, and, and your plans and, and what's next. What thought would you like to leave people with? What would you like them to hold um, on? Um, I just think, well, I just think like grasp onto the things that you're passionate about and keep them there. Um, maybe accept that sometimes it's okay to be bored and to like just have time to reflect and maybe talk things through this is the first time I've, you know, I don't get interviewed because I basically go into a school with my books and I show them the work and they go, oh yeah, we'll have one of those. So for me to delve deeper, a bit deeper into what's important to me and what I'm passionate about is really important. So I just say, maybe just find time to reflect and, and ponder and write things down, but also to learn to say no I'm not going to do that, which is quite tricky, but just to learn to say it and justify why and not take too much on. And basically try in your work. I don't know who, you know, people are young or older listening to this, but just sort of like maybe try something out that, you know, that you, you didn't think you would enjoy doing. You might actually really love it or just, you know, search through and, um, listen to people who who know you well and listen to their advice with my without my friend jane telling me to right, stop doing all that high impact stuff and try doing something calmer i don't know if i'd be in this calm state right now so you know and i might not have even looked at your email and i might have gone oh i can't do that that's just too <laughs> difficult so yeah all those things <laughs> and love yourself <laughs> which is a bit cliche but you should <laughs>